Welcome to the Central Energy Alchemy Podcast. I'm trying something a little bit different with this particular episode in that I'm going to do a visual portion that will end up on YouTube and also an audio portion that's going to end up on Anchor. So we'll see how this episode turns out on either platform. Very emotional over that last This Is Us episode. Oh my goodness. So if you haven't been watching This Is Us or don't know what the show is, I'm confused. But This Is Us is a great show that NBC had and you can catch all of it on Hulu streaming. It is amazing. Please check it out. It's beautifully written. But this episode, it's this, the, the series is almost over. Like it, it's, it's the finale, right? The next week is the finale. And this one had me in tears for so many reasons. Now, if you've not watched it, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but I will just speak about aspects of it that really spoke to me. And I hope speak to you too, when we talk about life and, and death and why we're here and what we're doing and living in the moment and just living full of joy. So if you don't know, uh, I lost my ex-husband in 2020 due to all the madness and craziness in the world. And, you know, even though we weren't married, I still loved him, you know, and he still loved me. And we fought, <laughs> like we had lots of arguments over like some of the dumbest shit, right? But we were still friends. We were close friends. And his loss was devastating to me and our children in a sense that it just seemed like he would always live. It just, it just, he seemed like somebody who would fight death if death ever, ever came for him, you know? And so some of the pieces of This Is Us resonated with me in terms of that and then becoming the, the matriarch, if you will, and the person who now needed to lead these children and lead them through this experience. It resonated a lot with me. And I didn't see a lot of myself in Rebecca because that woman could handle lots of things. If anything, <laughs> I think I sometimes look to see to this character to go, how did she handle that? Like, how did that end up working out? And because of the way the show was written going into the future and the present and the past, I would often find myself emotional thinking about the past and how it has tied into the present and the possibilities for the future. And I find myself realizing that I wasn't always as present in the moment as I wanted to be. When you're caught up in survival and when you're caught up in fear, it's difficult to be present. It's difficult to be with what is because you're really wishing that what is wasn't you're looking toward the future hoping that it can somehow be better and you're lamenting the past that got you into the present moment and i know that i spent a lot of my life doing that so if anything the show was a reminder to be present to see the joy in the moments even the difficult ones and the challenging ones how does this even tie into like pleasure and sensuality and sex and orgasms? I mean, duh. your sex is always going to be better when you're in the present moment. I did a post on Instagram and Facebook speaking about how I had made this really great salad and it was amazing. I make bomb salads, but I wasn't eating the salad. Like, I wasn't tasting the salad, right? I was like listening to a webinar on QuickBooks and I was scrolling through my phone at the same time and I was scarfing down the food and I found myself in this space where my body was feeling tense and then I was like, hold on, what's happening here? I wasn't present. I wasn't present with my food. So I paused for a moment. And then I just started taking bites and just really 
chewing slowly and savoring the sage that I put in there, right? And the salt and the pepper, the Parmesan cheese, threw some cheddar cheese in on that bad boy as well, the crispness of the lettuce. I made it a point to be present. Using all of my senses, feeling the pleasure of the food and the enjoyment that it gave me. How often are we actually doing that and how different would life be if we took time to slow down? We're all so busy. Life has so much to offer. We've got to get it all in. And the fear is that we're not going to be able to do it all before we die. But here's the truth. You're not going to be able to do it all before you die. Because there's always going to be something else to do. Who gets to the end of life and says, okay, that's it. There's not another experience to be had whatsoever. No, there's always one more sunset, one more sunrise, one more smile, one more apple to eat, cheeseburger, one more walk to take, one more car ride, one more hug, one more really good, slow lovemaking session, even in your 80s. There's always something more to do. I love This Is Us because it was always a reminder to me to to slow down. The kids, they grow up so quickly, so quickly. And then before we know it, everyone's in a different phase of life. <sighs> I boohooed, I boohooed watching it today. No lie, I boohooed. Got the good makeup on. I boohooed, y'all. And I'm so glad that <laughs> I waited until after I saw it to, you know, they're on a little, you know, eyeliner, a little mascara. <laughs> because it was rough for a minute. And I was watching it with my eldest son and he cried too. <sighs> Just be in the moment. Take time when you cook, when you dance. Take time when you make love. Take time when you self-pleasure. Take time when you're speaking to those who matter most to you. Just take the time. It's really the one thing that you can't get back and it's the one thing that we all have a limited amount of. I think that's all I have to say today. Hmm. All right, let's see how this experiment goes. Post it in two places at one time. Bye. Thank you.